Greetings, groovy people! Welcome to this week's video. I'm the self-proclaimed Blue Dragon, and we're starting a little mini-series where I'm going to walk you through how I went about printing and copywriting my own Not Safe for Work original comic, both the first and second acts of Dark Horse. And I'm also going to kind of, in this introduction video here, this paperback printer as I'm calling it. Oh, I'm so off the screen. I'm trying to keep an eye on that. Sorry, y'all. But I'm going to kind of walk you through my own mistakes, how I fucked up when I was younger, so that maybe you can avoid making the same mistakes that I did and save yourself some money. So this is just the introduction video and I'm going to kind of start by showing you how awful I got my start. <laughs> in the printing world. This is the very first version of Dark Horse in its print version, which I had to do for my professional skills course. You can tell it is awful. I don't know how I graduated. That's not their fault, <laughs> necessarily. I won't get into it. They had no illustration courses. So I was actually majoring in ceramics, but as part of this, I had multimedia pieces, which looked better than this. I had like some ceramic stuff, which looked okay. And then I had this print version, which I had to uh, nail down so that people wouldn't steal it. So that, well, not, not that not that they would steal it, but so that people wouldn't accidentally walk off with it, and it would still be available throughout the entire show that the group of people and I had to put on. Um, I won't go into details about that. There was a lot involved. My second attempt was going through a professional company. Now they did the people who printed didn't really make any mistakes. I didn't know what I was doing. I should have learned more about printing before going to the printers for that show. I should have known more about printers before going through Ex Libris because they flat out lied and said they, that they would be able to make a manga style book, which they didn't, and I'll go into that in another video. But this was my second attempt and they just slapped the cover on, didn't use the bleeder, <laughs> anything. But again, I'm going to do this series so that you can avoid the mistakes that I made whenever I went to print. Third, third attempt, we'll say third attempt, or, oh wait, what's the other way? You can do three like this too. Three, third, three, whatever. Hopefully the final until I actually get enough of these done to create volume one of Dark Horse. This is the more recent version, which you'll notice I've actually branded it. I've grown a little bit. Let's put it in the order it's supposed to be. I no longer have it reading right to left because my audience is predominantly Western. I mean, I do have international readers, but most of them are not reading right to left. Anyhow, so I've branded it. I've flipped it around. And for, for these, I've actually gotten copyrights. So I have a little bit of experience and I would like for you guys to learn from my mistakes and what I'm going to be doing in this series is showing you how I go about editing, um, what I do to, to do the layout and get it in there for PDF form, to get to the printers, quotations, you know, getting quotes, printing, and then the final step, getting your copyright, or not the final step, but a step in this, getting your copyright for selling your stuff. So um, that's what I'm going to go over. I am not going to be talking about getting ISBNs. While I did know how to do that at one point, I have never gotten one because I do not intend to sell in a bookstore at this time unless it's like a local shop. But if somebody's interested in that, let me know and I'll do the research and, uh, you know, do a video on it. But for right now, that's not what we're doing. Let's go to the other video where I'm going to be working on an Act 3 page for, you know, edits and fixing things up. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, so in the background I am working on sketching a redraw of an Act 3 page. I'll probably be doing more with it in next week's video as I go deeper into this printing series. But I do want to make one thing clear that although I make hard copy prints of Dark Horse, it is going to remain free indefinitely on my main website, which is the crystallotuschronicles.com. And it's also going to be free on my mirror site, the Tapas version, which is a revamp. Webtoons is updating right now with Act 4, you guys. I've started updating that again now that i got a bit of a backlog. 
And of course, the original, not the original, but the original Mirror site, which actually existed before my main website, Comic Fury. So it's still going to be up there. It's still going to be free. I just like to make these to print and sell in my shop at thecrystallotuschronicles.com and also to sell when we can finally go to conventions again. So whenever that will be. But anyway, anyway, before I send anything to the printers, first thing that I do is edit the app that I'm working on. For me, this entails several steps and I'm going to break these steps down for you now. The very first thing that I do is go through every page and look for obvious grammatical edits and I take note of those. I write down the page and the panel that needs to be fixed. While I'm doing this, I look for visual mistakes as well, missing screen tone pieces, really bad perspective, the pacing of the story, confusing panels or action confusing pages. I take note of all this and I plan for corrections or things that are going to be complete redraws. Sometimes I'm blessed with just needing to redo a panel or two. Other times I hate the whole fucking page. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> Hate it. Maybe it was a week where I was in a hurry and I just needed to get something done because I'm unorganized and can't create a buffer, although now I do have a buffer and I'm trying to keep that buffer, but I digress. Act 3, I actually had two pages that I wanted to just pretty much draw from scratch. I didn't like the way I depicted things. I thought it was confusing. I'm pretty sure readers were too polite to say it was confusing. <laughs> so yeah, there are also several places where the perspective is really bad so I have to make those corrections. And while I'm looking for my own edits, I enlist the help of my partner to also help me edit. It's always a good idea to have one or two or possibly three people helping look over what you've done and letting you know whether or not they get what's going on. Now I would err against having too many cooks, as they say, because you... You know, people can nitpick if you have too many people. You try to find a, a group of people that you trust, either a friend, a family member, partner, someone that is pretty good with editing or is pretty good at catching things. Don't have too many unless you really want because then you got too many opinions and you might be second guessing yourself when you're doing okay. But find some people that you trust on that. It's always good to have a, another pair of eyes taking a look at what you're doing. Something that I like to remind myself is that I know the story. I know what I'm trying to get across. So when I read my comic, what I've done, if I've accidentally omitted something, my mind may be filling in the gap for me. So having my partner read it lets me know how an outsider sees what I'm doing. And he points out missing continuity or grammatical errors and other mistakes, confusing visuals, shit perspective, stuff that I already mentioned. He's also pretty good at pointing that stuff out. Of course, I'm not always able to fix what's pointed out because of my skill level, but the point is I try to make it a little bit better. I'm not just coming at it half-ass. If I suck, it's because I put my whole heart into sucking. <laughs> But before I start doing my edits, I also make it a point to go to my websites to see how the audience is understanding the story. And why do I do this? I think it's obvious, but I have found that if everyone who is commenting on a page is confused, or they, there's kind of a general consensus of something that I personally think that that's not what I meant to say, but this is what's presented, this is how it's being understood, then I need to fix things and make it clear because it's not everybody who's reading my comic that's making a mistake. If that's what everybody is thinking, then I've made the mistake. You, you, I mean, realistically, you gotta be an adult about this. Not everyone's going to be wrong and you are only right. I also value the opinion of my readers and they may have some really good insight on how to improve something. While I'm the creator, it is possible I may have made a character misspeak or say something wrong or have, you know, maybe their voice isn't coming through correctly. And, you know, an audience that's been with you for a while, even though you know it and even though they're not the writer, they also get to know the characters, especially, like I said, if they have been reading from the very beginning, I feel like, you know, they might be able to catch something that I've missed. 
So while my story isn't going to be dictated by the readers, I do think it's very important to keep an open mind and to also keep them in mind and respect some of their input because, I mean, ultimately, I might have the decision on what the final thing is going to be, but it's a fool who thinks that they are always right and it's Word of Wednesday presumptuous to assume that your audience doesn't know anything about the characters when they've been ideally forming relationships or liking the characters, you know. So I think it's very good to, li to at least go and take a look at what the readers are saying because they have some valuable input as well as yourself. And it is ultimately something that you want everyone to enjoy too. If people aren't enjoying it, I mean, again, err on the side of caution. If you have a vision, you know, stick with it, but don't wall yourself up and be impervious to criticism because, I mean, you can, you know, everything is influenced by everything else. It's good to have influences and hear other people's opinion, in my opinion. <laughs> everything's an opinion. And if everything's an opinion and opinions are like assholes, then everything is an asshole. That's logic. Okay. So after I've made notes of all my edits, let's just walk away from that statement there, you guys. I'm going to pretend it didn't happen. Um, after I've made notes of all the edits, then I get to work on fixing those pages that need it and preparing each page to be the appropriate size for the page that's going to be laid out in InDesign, be it a page that has several panels on it or whether it's a page that has panels but also has some bleeds. I'd like to do that a lot. I'll have like a bottom or a top part of the page bleed all the way to the end, but then like have middle boxes. Or sometimes I'll have a page that just extends the entire one page or two page spread and it needs to go all the way to the edge of the page and there's no white guttering or border. Next week's video, we're actually going to go more into that. I'm going to be talking a bit about layout, page size, the safeties, what order to put your page in, you know, your pages in for when you send it to the printers, and a lot more. So, I invite you to join me next week when we delve into those details. But, question of the week, what are your editing processes? If you write, or if you have a comic of your own, or maybe you do just art pages or something? How do you edit? I'd like to know your strategies. Dark Horse Act 1 and 2 are available on my personal shop page at the crystallotuschronicles.com. But if you like what I do and you want to help support this comic and these, these videos, I always welcome one-time donations or monthly patronage. You know, it's, it's always appreciated. And of course, as always, thanks go out to my patrons and subscribe stars and donators and viewers like you. Low on cash? Fear not. <laughs> I'm all for y'all liking the video, subbing, doing the bell thing, all of that stuff which is free is also very helpful to me. So it helps spread the love, helps build morale, yeah, you know, shows support for the video. So thank you. I appreciate that. Until next week, be excellent to each other. Peace and love. Fare you well and keep on trucking. Ultimately, 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 ultimately.